hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name is Jason Newland and this is going to be or is I say going to be because I've not really started the session yet but it's going to be a let me bore you to sleep session and the whole idea behind this is I just talk it's a mixture of me talking total nonsense and me talking about nothing you know it's kind of a mixture some of it is me talking about my life and interspersed with that will be the aim that your mind will just get so bored. You'll be so bored that you'll just drift off. So only listen to this or watch it if you're watching on YouTube when you can safely close your eyes. The podcast this episode and all episodes and all my sessions in fact are available on my website jasonnewland.com they're available on iTunes on Spotify on uh, whatever uh, SoundCloud on Spreaker iHeartRadio it's you know very different lots of different places or you can just google Google my name or you could Google let me bore you to sleep and I'm sure lots of uh, stuff will come up so only listen when you can say if you close your eyes uh, of course I might have already said that but I try and say it every time it seems like a bit of a silly thing to say really when it's a sleep session when I'm here to just to talk and bore you completely so that your mind just switches off so clearly you'd think well perhaps I shouldn't be driving a helicopter or you know something like that maybe ooh, maybe I shouldn't play football in a cave or something, you know, just obviously probably a good idea anyway, but ideally I mean you don't have to be lying down on a bed. But you can be. You can be sitting in a chair, comfortable chair. It's completely up to you. And just to let you know, I'm not going to be, I, I will bring an end to the session by saying goodbye, but I won't be sort of trying to wake you up or anything like that, I'll, you, I'll just be saying that's the end of it, you know, goodbye, see you next time or whatever, and that's it. So there's no counting up, and there's no counting down, because technically it's not hypnosis, it's just boredom, boredom gnosis. It's my own invention. <laughs> it's not. How can boredom be anyone's invention? Um, but using it in this way is. I'm probably probably one of the main exponents of this uh, online by pronouncing myself the most boring person on the planet gives you the opportunity to listen to my monotonous ramblings and realize that there's nothing to listen to and when that happens this is just a natural thing that happens is your brain starts to switch off your attention 
really kind of doesn't want to be on what it's on and because there's nothing else for your attention to go on there's just my voice so your focus is naturally becoming more and more narrowed onto my voice so the only place left for your for your mind to do really is just to drift off to sleep so it's okay and I suppose I should say that you know if if you're sitting there or lying down and you're uh, trying to you know you kind of um, I don't know so you're determined to stay awake and you know then why are you listening to this that would be a bit of a pointless uh, situation mind you flip that on its head and the more you try to stay awake the harder it will be so it's kind of a a win-win situation in some ways but it's also a permission situation you by listening to my sessions by watching my videos whether it's this one or one I did in 2006 you know you give permission to for me to offer you suggestions and to it's kind of you inviting me into your life albeit maybe just for a short period but you invite me into your mind and trust in me to just keep you company for a while and I know that some people will use these sessions for that as well because there are people I keep saying the word people but I don't I don't sounds like it's quite general you know but there are there are people out there followers of mine fans whatever you want to call put the name to it is uh, that like to listen to my sessions and maybe not always to go to sleep so I don't mind what reason in fact <laughs> I've got no control over what reason people listen to me but if you're listening just for the company then hi welcome if you're listening because you want to drift off to sleep welcome if you're listening because you're determined to stay awake of course welcome again you know the idea of trying to stay awake it seems to have the that pressure puts the extra pressure on I think I think it's uh, it's I don't know, it's like meeting someone for the first time before you meet them all your friends say oh um, they, they mention something about how they look physically and they say well don't mention it to them and don't stare and don't look uh, you know because a person is self conscious about it it could be simple something just it could be just a haircut I don't know it could be it could be a physical it could be how tall they are or whatever how short they are or maybe you know it could be anything but it's really difficult when you do meet them even though no, normally I wouldn't care people's height um, and it's got no interest to why would anyone be interested in that and the only reason I'd be in I suppose if I had to employ somebody and the job entailed reaching things off a really high shelf and there was no stools to stand on or anything like that then maybe I'd need someone tall enough to do that job but I don't employ anybody for anything so that's not anything I need to really be that concerned about
in the same way as if you I actually did this course a reflexology course and one of the people female on the course absolutely detested feet I mean admittedly the course wasn't just reflexology it was also full body massage uh, Indian head massage but a big part of it was reflexology why would you do a course on reflexology by the way if you don't know what reflexology is it involves feet so that's why I'm talking about feet and I just that is not the right person to have on that course I would say but there you go what am I who am I to I'm not in charge of those things all I know is when it came to practicing on each other nobody wanted her to work on their feet for the simple fact that she didn't want to do it and the look of disgust on her face having someone touching your feet with a look of disgust is not the nicest thing in the world it's uh, very unusual so I forgot what I'm talking about now yeah, I'm getting tired yeah, I can feel my, feel my toes are getting bored do you ever get that where part of your body just feels like it's just had enough for one day just doesn't want to do anything just is quite happy to just be still be calm relax kind of just be at one with the world you know at peace I suppose you know somebody actually asked me the other day on YouTube but I haven't replied yet is it Mr. Beaver I think uh, about doing a session focusing on the idea of being back inside the womb uh, just, I just like the idea of saying back inside the womb you know a bit like the stage hypnotists say that to the audience or to the to the participants on the stage well I want to clip my fingers you'll be back in the room you're back in the womb and there is something about that I've talked about this in the past about having that safe space which is we've all got it inside us it's a place that we I don't mean, I don't mean literally physically you know you haven't got to dislocate your elbow to reach inside yourself it's not I'm not I don't mean like that it's it's a it's a space a safe space where you emo for emotionally that would be the probably the best way to de describe it a space where you just feel completely unencumbered by anything from the day that you've had from your life really no worries no problems no concerns no physical issues, no pain, no no anything, no stress. It's just complete calm. And that seems to be uh, kind of like a womb-like situation. Where you just and also there's the growing situation because that's a place where you grow the womb is a place where you grow and I suppose at this point it's not about physical growth is it with us with an adult 
although it can be there's physical growth as far as healing physical healing physical changes so you know with an injury a physical injury then you do need growth to occur so that the the blood vessels take what's you know what the healing and everything I don't know much about I was going to say chemistry but you know about biology stuff like that but it's a process a physical process that occurs when you're physically healing and I guess in a sense while you're in that womb like state it allows that to happen a bit more easily without any distractions because that happens naturally and you can also benefit from maybe focusing on it as well whilst you're in the womb state while you're in that safe space although you don't have to be feeling like you're in that place in order for you to focus on wishing yourself to be feeling healthier and allowing in your mind allowing that healing physical healing process to maybe even speed up in a sense it feels like we're given permission you're given your mind permission to do those things and that's where the power of the mind is amazing because you've only really got to ask your mind or tell your mind or give it permission to do certain activities to allow you to feel more comfortable quicker you know allowing you to feel more confident when you travel and you can play around with these things you can test them I also think a good thing to do as well is because really your mind is the most important thing the most important person or if you want to you know I know it's not, not a separate person but it's you it's the most important thing in the universe for you because of the changes and the help that your mind can give you and already does anyway you know all the natural healing that occurs you know all the natural bodily functions that are controlled by the mind continue to just you can enjoy that you can also show appreciation to your mind by thanking your mind thanking your unconscious because for me I suppose when I use the word unconscious the unconscious mind I think more of in a sense of those things that we don't consciously control so I can lift my right arm I can move it about that's the conscious mind I'm doing that myself but if I accidentally put my hand on a hot surface my hand would move of its own accord before I even consciously registered that it was on a hot surface
there's been times where something's dropped on the floor maybe I've got Andre and a dog's come close to him and I've pulled him back and it's as if I've grabbed him before I even knew the dog was there although I did you know it's like as if it happened before I was consciously aware of it and I'm sure you may have had these experiences with maybe children where you just moved so quickly and stopped your child from falling over or banging their head and so you didn't consciously know until you'd actually grabbed them and stopped them from hurting themselves so the unconscious mind is always looking out for us that's how I kind of think of the unconscious mind is like a guardian in a sense someone that's protecting us someone that really does have our self interest at the forefront always it's like our unconscious mind is that person that cares most about us in the whole world that loves us the most to have anybody alive yet at the same time the unconscious mind doesn't always know what you need so you need to ask or tell your unconscious mind what it is that you need I find that stuff quite fascinating that I try and look at it in my own way to make it so it's not quite as um, I don't know esoteric or weird you know some kind of strange um, paranormal activity when it's not, it's just your mind. It's you. It's the biggest part of you. All those long lost memories. You know, I actually remembered something the other day that I'd forgotten about. And I was at school and it was, uh, it was just a lesson that I did, technical drawing. And I just remembered that I used to do technical drawing. Even though I'd already, always remembered an incident that happened in that class, but I've forgotten what the class was. I kind of just didn't really think about it. And that was a waste of a year. I really didn't. Uh, didn't enjoy that class at all. Really wasn't for me. It's uh, doing 3D. It's, it's I like I quite like looking at the pictures afterwards, but and I do comprehend probably a bit more now than I did back then how it works. But just the whole designing buildings and architecture and. It's just, it was never going to be my uh, thing. It's uh, measurements. <laughs> I think it was a measurement thing. I've always struggled with that. You know, not I struggled, but I think um, I seem to have had a brain that is not warmed to numbers. And I genuinely don't know why it's. If it's dyslexia, is it dyspraxia? I don't know, but there you go. I'm I'm not that bothered about it anymore because I think I've found something that I can do. Uh, 
and that's make toast. I'm really good at making toast. I'm assuming you're asleep now, so I can say whatever I want. I talk about toast. Oh, I love toast. Don't like burnt toast, but I do like toast. I bought some marmalade the other day. Not opened it yet. But oh, I'm looking forward to having some marmalade on toast. Probably at the weekend. It's the little things, isn't it? It's the little things to look forward to. They're beautiful. Oh, marmalade. Marmalade on toast. Yep. Just like Paddington Bear loves his marmalade. I love my marmalade. I do I do miss the kind of bread that we used to have when I was younger. I'm sure the bread used to be better. I don't know, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just fantasizing about it. But I just remember that bread bread that was toasted used to be just so beautiful maybe it still can be maybe it's about how I perceive it I suppose once I've added marmalade I imagine it will taste pretty nice yeah I'm pretty pleased about that nice bit of marmalade So you can ask your mind, you can thank your mind, you can care about your mind, you can show gratitude to your mind, because that's the control centre. Of course things like your heart, it just happens on its own, but your unconscious mind is controlling that. You know, everything is, is it like what you would call it, autonomous, automatic, these things. But although that's being controlled, what you can do is ask your unconscious mind to allow you to feel calmer at certain times. And that might be maybe now. You know, you may decide to sit down uh, to relax or to sleep. And maybe your heartbeat is a little bit faster than you're happy with. And you can allow yourself, you can ask yourself to allow yourself to calm down. And just to slow, slow things, you know. Not just the thoughts that you were thinking, but slow down the sensations in your body. And it, ha it can have a real calming effect on you. A real, real. feeling of looseness I want to say looseness I don't just mean the looseness of your body maybe the looseness of your joints the looseness of your limbs the looseness of maybe those muscles the connections between the different muscles of your body Maybe that becomes and feels looser. Maybe the looseness of your jaw, your eyes. Maybe a looseness within your thoughts, so that those thoughts that were maybe getting in the way of your peacefulness start to become looser become disconnected with each other so they don't have the same energy that they did before you decided to allow 
your mind to make these changes and loosen those thoughts because it can go even deeper than that loosening limiting beliefs that get in the way of your happiness and start to feel loosened even to the extent of just dropping away turning it from you know those beliefs from being permanent to being optional changing the word above those beliefs to optional choices change the word to choices you choose how you think you choose what you believe the fact is we've always chose what we believe it's just it doesn't always seem like that way does it it's we get past these thoughts onto us from elders from parents society teachers friends family television internet actually you can get in touch with how you how you really feel Andre's decided to join in the, with the session by doing a going to the toilet on the paper in the corner of the room oh he's a good boy He just did a big fart. That's a bit weird. Anyway, if you were asleep, you wouldn't have heard that, so don't worry. But he did a he did like a zipper fart. It sounded, you know, like he was undoing his bag, like there's a zipper on his bag. But he can't do that. He's not able to un, you know changed the zipper so he must have done a zipper fart what a weird thing so I suppose when we think about the unconscious mind you can ask to sleep easier to sleep more naturally to sleep deeply to sleep safely and that can allow you to actually really be in touch with knowing really knowing that you're going to be able to sleep soundly and 
there's something inside you that can actually let you know that this feels right. Maybe it is a belief system. Perhaps that belief system wasn't there before, but now it is. It's being created and it's now in that area where your beliefs are kept. Maybe it's even replaced a former negative, unhelpful belief system that's no longer useful and can just go away. So, how does it feel to have that belief system that actually you will sleep a lot more easily from now on? Not just feeling it, not just feeling that this will happen, which is a nice feeling to experience now. It's also about knowing, believing, truly, one million percent believing that from now on you will sleep easier because that's just the way things are. And that thinking actually can transform your life, you know, depending on your situation regarding sleeping. that sense and that belief that it won't just be about falling asleep and sleeping safely and breathing easily and feeling comfortable physically as your mind just seems to dissolve into your pillow It's also the feeling of how you feel when you wake up, feeling of comfort, restfulness, feeling recuperated, feeling maybe energetic for the day ahead. perhaps even an increase in enthusias enthusiasm towards those things in your life that you may need to do or may want to do or maybe haven't done yet and would like to do allowing you to make more plans towards a happier future and a happier now. I guess there's something to be said about a sense of certainty when it comes to feeling really positive and happy about changes which have naturally occurred.
allowing you to really feel grateful towards yourself for allowing yourself this opportunity to get in touch with that part of you that can transform your life because that part of you wants you to be happy that part of you needs you to be happy and that part of you will do anything it can to make you feel happy and healthy and well so all you need to do is ask your unconscious mind what it is that you wish how you wish to feel and you can plan ahead plan for tomorrow plan for the weekend plan for now even you can just say I want this to happen in 10 minutes or I want this to happen now for example feeling a sense of relief from chronic pain if there's a, an issue let's say somebody's got a problem with their knee you can just say I'd like my knee to feel more relaxed now thank you for being there for me thank you for helping me and you can talk to your unconscious mind in the same way that you would talk to yourself I guess but only treating your unconscious mind with kindness and love maybe talk to your unconscious mind the way that you would like to be talked to by others with kindness with love with honesty and you can test this stuff out it's not a case of just believe in what I say you can test this you can ask your unconscious mind to do something for you it can be anything and the more often you go back to your unconscious mind and mention a certain thing for example maybe let's focus on the sleeping so asking your unconscious mind to allow you to feel more and more sleepy the more you prepare to get ready for bed so maybe you have a certain time that you need to go to bed every night let's say it's 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, whatever time it may be so maybe an hour before it's time for you to go to bed you can start to feel tired you can ask yourself, ask your unconscious mind to do that And ultimately the details are your own to choose because we all, all, we all have different life experiences and you know I've got a habit of staying up generally all night but a lot of people don't do that they go to bed at night I think most people do 
So you can just ask your unconscious mind for you to feel really, really tired. The closer you get towards that time. And the more you get prepared for bed, whether it's cleaning your teeth, going to the toilet, uh, turning the lights off in your home, whatever it is that you do to prepare to go get ready for bed. Maybe you do a strip tease in front of the mirror. I don't know, whatever it is you do. The more tired that you feel. And then as you get closer to actually getting it into your bed, the more tired you feel even more. So actually getting into your bed is a bit of a chore. Because you're just feeling so heavy and sleepy. And knowing that the second your head touches your pillow, that your mind will start to just empty. As those thoughts and worries and concerns and issues and problems and moaning and blah 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 just starts to sink into the pillow, vanishing. can just enjoy that feeling of being completely at peace. completely loose and when you know there's nothing to do it really opens up possibilities sleeping really deeply but not just sleeping but also feeling so relaxed and not just feeling so relaxed but also experiencing the sense of total safety really knowing that you are physically and emotionally completely safe and knowing that there is nothing at all that you need to do can either 
enjoy that sense of complete comfort that you feel in your body and through your mind or you can just ignore that sense of complete comfort that you're experiencing throughout all the muscles of your body and throughout your mind or maybe you can just not care about that sense of complete comfort that you're experiencing through every single fiber of your being Interested, but struggling to hold on to the thoughts that keep drifting away as your body and mind continue to feel more deeper comfort with that sense of knowing that you don't have to do anything there's nothing to say there's nothing to do there's nothing to think about there's nothing to feel brings me to the end of this session my website is jasonnewland.com speak to you next time